are many unique things about Nevada, but did you know that we have our very own species of butterflies? Today I'm hiking in the Spring Mountains, and to you and I, it represents absolutely beautiful scenery, and it is. But to scientists and researchers, it represents a sort of ecological island and home to the Spring Mountain Dark Blue Butterfly. The Spring Mountain Dark Blue Butterfly has adapted and survived in this area for more than 12,000 years. Dan, nice to see you up here on the mountain. Good morning, John. How are you? Fine, thank you. Welcome to our prime Spring Mountains Dark Blue Butterfly habitat. You having any luck finding here, some here today? You, your entire crew is charmed. You've come on the day with no wind, the flowers are out, the butterflies are here. The first time I've seen them here this year, so you, the timing couldn't have been better. Dan Thompson is a professor at UNLV, and he has dedicated a lot of time to study this beautiful insect. It's interesting talking to you. I come here for butterflies, and immediately you begin explaining the plant life. It's a direct relationship, huh? That's absolutely correct. Every single butterfly in the entire West, but particularly these, has a, either a single plant or a several plants that chemically are just right for their caterpillars to eat. And it's, it's literally the plant that sets everything else for the butterfly's life cycle. The species' survival directly relates to the perseverance of a plant called sulfur buckwheat. How many of these butterflies then are around here? The actual individuals of the species? Yes. Well, we could probably find several hundred on this hillside right now if we looked carefully. Thompson photographs the insect's life stages, from mating rituals to the female laying an egg on the sulfur buckwheat plant. And from the egg to the caterpillar stage, the plant is a food source for the caterpillar. Within a few weeks, it retreats into the soil and transforms into the pupa stage. A year later, the butterfly emerges if you think about it, it's a legacy of a butterfly that went all the way back to the Pleistocene and earlier when this woodland that we're in on the mountain slopes here stretched across the valley floor down by Tule Springs over to the east here where there were mammoth and giant ground sloths. This butterfly almost certainly was much more widespread then and it's literally a lineage that's ancient. Here, thank you so much. What a, what a joy. What a pleasure to talk to you. All right, I'm going to go talk to your buddy Corey. Corey Kallstrom is a wildlife biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Corey, my question for you is more about the landscape. Tell me about this as an ecological island. What does that mean? How did that happen? Well, the Spring Mountains is a, called a sky island. And what that means is that back in the times of the Pleistocene, and as the climate started to warm up, this place became isolated. So it's sort of an island in the middle of a desert. And it's a unique area just because of the unique life forms that occur here. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is planning to conduct a study on this butterfly's status, which could ultimately mean new protections for it. Why would the average person care about this beautiful little blue butterfly in the middle of this island? Why, why, do, why do we care? Well, we should care because the butterflies provide us with an indication of what's going on in the broader environment. When things go wrong in the environment and some of our uh, unique species, whether it's this butterfly or any other species, it tells us that something's going on in the environment that we should be concerned about. Mm. Corey and I finally spot one of the rare butterflies. Right there on that areogonum underneath that sagebrush. Do you see it right in front of you on the other side towards me? The yellow, yep, I see him. I see him. Now that I've spotted the star of this story, I want to know more about its connection to the land. This is C.J. Woodard, a wildlife biologist with the U.S. Forest Service. You know, I was just talking to the guys, and, and one thing I was taking from it is the, just the fragility of this butterfly system. What can you tell me about land management out here and how that ties into the whole thing? Well, us as a land management agency, we, we're, we manage for multiple uses. So I, we manage for OHV users, hikers, campers, whoever wants to come out and kind of use the land. The butterfly um, is it, incorporated in every decision and, and every action that we take. So people that come out here and use this land, who are they? Are they the locals and do they know about this system here? It's probably most of our locals um, from Cold Creek or anybody maybe from the west side from Corump who know about this area. And, and what would you like them to know if they come out here and use this area? When you come out here and you walk around and you see plants like these lying around, um, just walk, try to walk from walk, rock to rock and be on bare soil and just be cognizant of what you're doing and, and how you could be having an effect on the environment. They don't know, but do you know why they call them butterflies? 
No, I have no clue either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you for everything that you do out here. It really does matter to everybody, and I appreciate oh, it. No problem. Thank you for taking interest in the species. Absolutely. Taking an interest in the species is no small matter because what happens here in this species affects the greater, and it can affect humanity down the road in ways we don't even know. It's called the butterfly effect for good reason.